We've had a look at where conflict comes from, this entrenchment in a partial view of what is actually a, a unified whole. But why is it there at all? What is the purpose of conflict? Why do we live in this dualistic, contesting state? Well, let's try an experiment. If I say black, what's the first word that comes to mind? White. If I say big, small, night, day, up, down. Interesting, isn't it, that as soon as I say one thing, what comes into mind is its opposite. And this is very important because this has been recognised throughout the ages. The Greeks called it thesis, which we can say this is, if you like. And if I say this is, first thing, or well, one of the first things you're likely to think about is why it is not. And you've often had this, I know, and you've gone, wow, look at this, this is great. And somebody goes, well, oh, I'm not so sure, you know. They'll immediately think about the opposite of what you're positing. So when you say that this is the thesis, you automatically bring into existence, you bring it into existence, the anti-thesis. You posit one thing, you bring into existence the opposite, opposite. Just as when I say black, I bring into your mind white. And this is where conflict comes from. The problem is when we forget that the thesis and the antithesis are two aspects of the same thing. My grandmother used to say when I was arguing with my brother that we were arguing about two ends of the same stick. Or you probably heard the phrase, two sides of the same coin. Conflict comes, just like with red box, blue box, when we begin to think that this end of the stick is true and that end of the stick is not. When we break the joint in the middle. And this is very important. If we can remember that it's not this or not this, the thesis, the antithesis, not if you like in scientific terms the positive and the negative, but it is actually what is in the middle that is important, what unifies those two, then we can begin to resolve conflict. So, why is conflict important? What is its purpose? Well, Jung, you remember the psychologist and anthropologist, he says that conflict is necessary, opposites are necessary, for the articulation of unity. And if you think about it, all creativity, all progress, comes from two opposites. When you go, you know, there's something different here, and you explore that, and you find a new unity. If you think of a team that comes together, you bring it together a disparate group of people. If you think of it at work, you've got people from different divisions sitting in that project team. The reason they're there is not so everybody agrees instantly, but so that each can bring their different viewpoint to give a clearer idea on the whole, on the greater perspective of the issue in discussion. So we say that it is never either or, it is always and. And when we find ourselves thinking it's this or that, then it's useful to remember, hmm, what is the and in the middle that joins these two together? And we're going to take a look at that in a moment. So, conflict comes from, using this model, thesis, bringing about its antithesis, its antithesis, its opposite. That means that these are two different aspects on the same thing in the middle. Let me ask you, how do you handle conflict now? Think of the last time you had a conflict, at work or at home. What strategies do you use to handle conflict? 
And I know you can give me all the, the sort of handling conflict stuff. Well, I stop and I listen to the other person's point of view. And I, well, that's great. How often do you do that, particularly when it's something that's important to you? So I want you to think about how you really handle conflict or don't, as the case may be. Well, usually there are a number of strategies that we use. We compromise. Well, OK, look, I'll give you 50% of what you want if you give me 50% of what I want. Sometimes we let somebody else decide. OK, you have it your way. OK, no, you're the boss. We'll do what you want. Other times we ignore it. Conflict? No, no, everything's fine. It's wonderful. Never felt better in my life. Or, and very commonly, we fight it out. We win, lose the conflict by fighting it out. Recognise some of those strategies? I'm sure you do. We all use them all the time, one way or the other. Only one issue with those strategies is that they don't take us off this line. If you think of the win-lose, which is often one of the most frequently used, it's actually the thesis and the antithesis fighting it out, red box, blue box, fighting it out until the one person gives in and the other person wins. It's not resolved the conflict, it's just buried half of it, killed it and buried it. Think of a compromise. A compromise doesn't really resolve the conflict. I'll give you 60% of what you want, you give me... F We're still on this line. We're just moving along this line. And the other strategies of pretending everything is well or seeing no conflict or just giving in are all aspects of staying here without resolving it. However, if you think of that red box, blue box example, what happened with the third person is that they had a different perspective, that they could see the common joining factor between the two seeming opposites. And in this model, just as the thesis can be called the positive and the antithesis the negative, the third thing here is what is called the synthesis. The point that brings the unity out of seeming opposites. And you've had this. You've had this in an argument when you've been discussing something and you really can't get it. And it's only through the real exploration of that other, of the conflict of the opposing points of view that suddenly you go, ah, I see it now. I see what you're saying. I see how it fits in with me and my perspective. I understand the larger whole. And what you've just done is understood the synthesis, which in scientific terms is the neutralizing, or the neutral, positive, negative, neutral. This law of three is common to all the great traditions. The Hindus, they call it Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. In the Christian theology, there's Father, Son and Holy Ghost. In Hegelian dialectics or Marxian dialectics, there are the three things, just as there are in Greek and in science. So it's a fundamental aspect of nature, of creation. How does that work? Because as soon as you achieve a new synthesis, I see it, so it is this. That synthesis becomes a new thesis. And somebody goes, yes, but, whoop, in comes another antithesis, and you're off again. This is creation. This is the universe. The purpose of conflict is creation. Continual evolution. The bringing forth of something new from seeming opposites. And there's a great example of that for those of you who have children. Male, female, new person. New person, male, new female, new person. You can see it everywhere. One of the important points here, particularly for leadership, is that it doesn't stop. As soon as you see the unifying principle, the synthesis, that itself becomes a thesis and begins the next journey of exploration and discovery. The next journey of refinement or of improvement if you're thinking of product development. So the question is here, If I am stuck on this line, 
how do I actually find this higher point of synthesis? Have you ever been in a discussion and you got locked in with somebody else and then somebody's come in, maybe the chairperson, and said, now hang on a minute, guys. Hang on, what's happening here? What are we trying to do? What is the purpose of this discussion? Ever had that? Oh, I'm sure you have. We all have. What's happening then is they are bringing the two conflicting parties back to the deeper purpose of what's happening. Yeah? So in order to move up to the synthesis, you have to let go of your entrenched position and move down to remind yourself of the common purpose What are we trying to do? And you might have to ask that a few times. What's the point of this? What are, what are we here for? When you've got this purpose, you then understand that usually what people are arguing about are not ultimate truths or ways of doing things. They're merely arguing about the strategy to achieve a common purpose. Think about this in business. Everybody wants the business to succeed. And then they argue and discuss all this. The common purpose is success. So when we come back and remember that, it allows us to see that these two seeming opposites are part of a whole predicated upon the purpose. And when we've got the purpose, that then allows us to synthesize the two opposing views and come to a more unified perspective. In that example of arguing about the different strategies to achieve the purpose, it allows people to not look at why my strategy is right and yours wrong, but what's good about yours and what's good about mine and how we might unify those for an even better synthesis to achieve that purpose. So, in summary, in order, when you're locked on the thesis-antithesis line, in order to move up to the synthesis, you first have to go down to look at the deeper purpose that you're trying to achieve. And on the base of that common purpose, you can then explore how those two seeming opposites synthesize in the unified truth, purpose, objective of whatever it is people are arguing about. So what I'd like you to do now is think of an unresolved conflict that you have. Let's choose a, a work conflict with a workmate, probably in a project team or in a team. I'd like you to think of your perspective, what you think is right. I'd like you to think of what they think is right and be clear on that. And then remind yourself of the purpose of the discussion. What are you both trying to achieve? And when you've got that, take another look at your argument and their argument and see how a combination of both might achieve that purpose in an even better way.